Hey guys, my name is Matimio, and welcome to another episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming or Battlefield related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. Now to get the formalities out of the way real quick, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a YouTube message. The first question for today comes from Solo Wing, and it is, based on the current state of Battlefield 4, compared to what it was like at launch, what do you think has been improved or has been made worse, and how do you think the overall performance of Battlefield 4 will affect future Battlefield titles? Uh, well, at least from a technical standpoint, uh, the game is night and day difference for crashing. When the game first launched, as you guys are very aware, it was a nightmare trying to stay in a game. Like every, at least for me, every two rounds, I would crash to desktop. I even heard that consoles were crashing, and that doesn't even make sense because consoles are supposed to be reliable. They're supposed to be the same system settings. They're supposed to be very consistent. And so the fact that they were even crashing on consoles uh, was was a very big problem. And so I guess two dice is credit. This shouldn't even have been a problem. They've gone in, and the crashing, at least for me on PC, and I think for everyone else on console has been pretty much fixed at this point. It's, it's been smooth sailing for a couple of months. I haven't crashed in a very, very long time. Uh, but the other technical aspect that I think has completely changed the game, at least for me, is the black spawn-in screen. I don't know if you guys remember this, but it was terrible to spawn in on a teammate when the game launched. Like, there was this, there was this one to two seconds where you couldn't see anything on your screen. The kicker on it, though, was that the enemy could see you, and I think there may have been a quick, maybe 0.5 second immunity, but if anyone was looking in your general direction, it was basically a free kill for them. That you were a sitting duck, you couldn't move, and there were a lot of times when you would spawn, on, spawn in on your teammates, and it was basically basically like committing suicide. You were sitting there, the enemy had a clear shot on you, and you died instantaneously. Like, it was awful. And so, at least from a technical standpoint, I would say, other than fixing the crashing, which shouldn't even be mentioned because that shouldn't have been a problem, I think that has been the best change. Uh, but as for actual mechanics, there's there's been a lot done to this game from the start to try to improve the gameplay. We've got the nerf to the uh, the mobile anti-air, which has reduced its effectiveness, which is good because it was basically a god gun. You could sit in your deployment and kill everyone on the map. But I think probably the best change? I, I don't know, there's so many good ones, but the, the nerf to the scout helicopter. Uh, the scout helicopter was a god up in the sky. If you had two people repairing it and also using stinger missiles to take out other air vehicles alongside the pilot just destroying everyone down on the ground, uh, it was it was a tank up there. It was, it was pretty broken, and so the small tweaks, I would say, to the scout helicopter has been great. It doesn't seem to be nerfed into oblivion. It's, it's not crazy powerful like it was. It looks like the actually hit the sweet spot with that vehicle and so I, I think that is probably the best uh, but as for the worst change I, I don't know. I, I think what DICE has done so far with all the patching in Battlefield 4 and what we've got today uh, they've done a pretty good job. Oh actually the gunship you know what? The gunship was was worthless in the past, and while I still think it's not the best vehicle in the game, <laughs> I, I hate that vehicle with a fiery passion. And so I would say that the, the recent buff to it, while I understand why DICE increased its effectiveness, increased its power, in the same instance, I, I hate that vehicle with a passion, like a fiery, fiery passion. And so I would say that the buff to the gunship is the, the worst addition. Uh, but as for your final question about the overall performance of Battlefield 4 and how it will affect future Battlefield titles, I'm I'm not exactly sure. I, I do know that EA has come out and said that the the Battlefield 4 launch has not affected sales at all. Like its poor performance isn't going to affect future Battlefield titles. I think they said that they've sold as many as they were expecting for this game, and that the poor poor performance hasn't changed any of that. And while that could be true, like I don't have stats in front of me. I mean EA is a gigantic company, and so they probably run the numbers, and everything is looking good on their end. At the same time, this was not a good image for for DICE and EA. Like, Battlefield, in my opinion, if they hit this out of the park, it could have been a huge boon to their company. Like, they are trying to compete with Call of Duty. They want a piece of that pie, and I don't blame them. Like, that is a large market, that is a lot of money potential, and so I don't blame them trying to get more people into their game. But at the same time, I felt like this was such a missed opportunity to strengthen the image of Battlefield 
before. Like, the Call of Duty franchise is dipping. They did not sell as many copies as they did last year, and this is not necessarily the, the sign of the apocalypse for the Call of Duty franchise. I'm sure there's going to probably be another 10 down the line, but at the same time, if DICE and EA hit this out of the park, if Battlefield 4 was one of the best first-person shooters on the market, which I would say it is, but if it didn't have as many problems as it does with bugs, if its launch wasn't as crazy with the crashes and all the glitches, I just feel like that image would have stuck with their customers onto the next Battlefield title. And if they continued to produce a quality product that wasn't glitchy and felt like it was actually complete, you would start gaining a fan base, much like the Call of Duty, where the next Battlefield title, they're gonna go out and buy it. And while there are some negative attributes that come along with it, which is basically what Call of Duty has uh, fallen into, where they just produce basically the same game over and over again, and they don't try to expand upon the franchise or improve upon it, it's still something that I feel like Battlefield and EA and DICE were going for, but just completely dropped the ball on it. And so I would say that uh, while maybe future sales won't be as affected as I'm sure many people on Reddit will assume, like everyone there just is raging all the time, but uh, the fact that uh, Battlefield 4 was not as successful at launch, that's going to stick with people. People are going to remember that for the next title, and they probably won't pick it up, or it won't be as successful as it could have been. The next question comes from Ye Old Slothles. <laughs> I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it is, what do you think of having a malfunction on jets, say, once the health drops to 20%? I find it extremely hard to get kills in jets because the enemy always bails before I get the kill. The malfunction would work so that once you get, once the jet drops to a certain health, you will not be able to bail. Uh, I, I definitely feel your pain on this. A couple of weeks ago, when I was trying to unlock the Phantom Camo from the Naval Strike, DLC, I encountered this problem. I was taking out jets somewhat effectively on some of these maps, but every single time they got down to a very low health pool and they knew that they were about to get taken out, they would bail. They would be like, screw this, I'm gonna go down, continue on with my kill streak. You know, you don't deserve these points, they're all mine, I'm gonna continue on with my life. And while initially, yes, this was very frustrating, it's like, oh man, my KD is not increasing on the scoreboard, I would love to see my points rise a little bit faster over there. At the same time, I kept thinking to myself, Okay, I just denied a jet up in the sky. Having air superiority in any battlefield title is a huge boon for my team. Helicopters now have free reign to just destroy everything down on the ground. I have free reign, at least for a couple of seconds, to try to take out uh, take out boats down there, try to take out tanks, infantry. And I think if you just take it from that mindset, uh, your your outlook on the entire thing will will change. Like, sure, maybe dice could give you a couple more points if you do destroy an enemy an enemy jet that could be a step in the right direction just to reward players for destroying those vehicles and making it so that they're a little bit higher on the scoreboard but at the same time it really does allow you to basically do whatever you want up in the sky you have so many more options when you take out the jet because that's pretty much your only counter right now in Battlefield 4. Yes, you could say that the mobile anti-air could be a menace, but at the same time, there are some maps that do not have a mobile anti-air, and if they're not looking at you and there are no jets up in the sky, you literally can do whatever you want on the battlefield. And so I would I would look at it from that standpoint. Yes, it does get a little frustrating, but uh, just keep that in mind. The next question comes from Jonathan, and it is, what is your opinion on a tactical observation camera as a kit for the recon? This would allow you to peek around corners to spot camping soldiers at the end of a hallway. I think this would be especially helpful on Operation Locker around the center, the central point on Conquest. Uh, this is actually a really cool idea. Uh, the other day, I was talking about how I adore the MAV. I love flying it around. I love using that information to my advantage to know exactly where the enemy team is on the battlefield, but it's not very useful on maps where uh, it's all indoors. Operation Locker or Operation Metro is a prime example of this. You fly an MAV in there, you're not going to be able to get the, the full use out of that gadget. But if you have the option to use a little camera where you could maybe uh, extend this out from a corner and then you can maybe switch it from the left and the right so you could only look at a 90 degree angle from where you were, that could be very interesting. You wouldn't be leaving yourself exposed. Maybe the enemy could pinpoint that the camera was being extended, you know, extended out from that corner so they might know you're there. But at the same time, you're not leaving yourself 
yourself vulnerable when you do that. And then you can give that information to your teammates to be like, okay, they're off to the left a little bit. They're behind that barrier. If you go right now when they're not looking, you're going to be able to make it across the road or across, you know, the alleyway or something like that. That could be a very cool addition into the game. And honestly, I could actually see something like this added into a future DLC. Uh, DICE is always trying to add little nifty gadgets in the expansion packs because, well, let's be honest, it sells those DLCs. People want to get access to this new content, and if there was a new nifty little gadget like this for Battle for Four, I, I have a feeling that people would be more enticed to buy the DLC. Uh, that being said though, you know, actually maybe they wouldn't. People don't use the MAV all that often in this game. Like every so often you might see it up in the sky and they're just up there the entire round. But most players just opt to use C4, they opt to use the motion balls, maybe even the tugs because it provides a motion sensor even if you're not inside of it, or you can't even be inside of it. But you know what I mean. And so maybe this wouldn't be something that DICE would find all that useful, or maybe they know that people wouldn't use it but for someone who really likes to have as much information at my fingertips, and I know that there are a lot of moments when I would love to have this on a map like Operation Locker or Operation Metro, I personally think that this would be an awesome addition into the game. The next question comes from Shadow's Blade, and it is, What do you think about bringing back the dropship from Battlefield 3 as a commander arsenal? You could set a route for it to fly on, and it would work just like it did in Battlefield 3. It would have to take more points than a vehicle drop so that it wasn't overused and it was balanced. Uh, this is one of the best suggestions that I've heard for the commander in a very long time. Like, I'm not a huge fan of the, mo of the mode to begin with, but if this was added into the game it would actually give the commander a couple more options because right now all they really do is spam UAV constantly. Like, let's be honest, you basically just spam counter UAV, UAV, and then you have a couple more options here and there. But it was clear that DICE pretty much just wanted you to constantly click UAV and they wanted it to feel more like a mini game on your, your iPad. And it was, it was pretty apparent that that's what they were going for. Uh, but if this was added into the game, it would give commanders a couple more options. They could drop this in the backfield, allow their teammates to maybe back cap some of the capture points, or maybe if their team is having a hard time pushing out from one of their objectives, they're just getting spawn trapped the entire time. If the commander has saved enough points, they can then drop this in the backfield and allow their teammate to break break free of that chokehold. Not only that, but it would just give the commander more options on the battlefield. Like, I'm, I'm all for giving them powerful tools that is, can influence the match, but the same time aren't blatantly overpowered. And I think if the dropship was added into the game, it wouldn't be in the blatantly overpowered section of it. Uh, the one thing that would need some balancing is, would you have the option to deploy a tank? Because I remember back in Battlefield 3, you could infantry drop, which was the main thing, but you could also take advantage of the tank. There was one vehicle inside of it that would parachute down to the ground. The animation was awesome. That was actually one of my favorite animations in the game because it just looks so cinematic and so cool. But there was a vehicle in there, and so uh, that would need some tweaking because one extra tank on the battlefield could sway the, the battle in your favor quite heavily, and so I don't know if, it, if that would be an option, but at least make it so that infantry could have another spawn point. Like, I think that would be a nice addition. Uh, but that is about it for today's Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, once again, if you would like to submit your own question that can be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or by sending me a YouTube message. Uh, but until tomorrow, guys, have a good one and take it easy.